Hello everyone, I'm Yu Xiaoping. Today we'll study episode 2 of the brief history of Chinese ceramics. During the Yuan Dynasty, all of China came under the political control of the Mongols. The Mongolians revealed white as auspicious color. This led the rulers to show great interest in quality white porcelains made in Jindajin. In 1278, one year before the Mongolians reunified China, the Fuliang Porcelain Bureau was set up in Jinajan by Yuan rulers to administrate producing imperial porcelains for royals. It was the first office of this kind in Chinese history. During the Yuan dynasty, the bluish-white porcelains that were at its height during Song were gradually replaced by blue and white porcelains. There are several reasons for it. First, the decoration style of blue patterns on white ground was right to the taste of the Mongolians. Second, the production difficulties for producing blue and white porcelains are much lower than that of bluish-white porcelains. With painting in cobalt with brush on dry green wares for the Froma while using knives to carve or to mold for the latter. Third, the color of blue and white porcelains is easily displayed in a bright and stable way with strong expressive power for its light and shadow effect. At last, blue and white porcelains were sold at extremely high prices overseas. A dramatic contrast to the low production cost in China, which would earn the Yuan government huge profits and their emphasis. As for the ceramic techniques, an important improvement was the addition of kaolin into clay, which originally contained China stones alone. The binary formula could raise the firing temperature, reduce the deforming rate, and make porcelains whiter and finer. Therefore, producing quality porcelains at the large size become possible. In addition, high felt colored glazed porcelains, like red and blue ones, were successfully produced, which was another achievement of the Yuan Dynasty. The porcelain situation of the Yuan Dynasty was a big difference from those of Tang and Song. When monochrome wells took the lead, it also laid a foundation for the development of polychrome porcelain in the following Ming and the Qing dynasties. In the Ming dynasty, many kilns outside Jingdezhen suffered a decline. With their decline, many experienced craftsmen came to Jingdezhen, which was described as craftsmen come from all sides, and porcelains go worldwide. In 1369, the former Fuliang Porcelain Bureau was transformed into Imperial Porcelain Manufactory under the order from the Emperor Zhu Yuanzhong to produce porcelain solely for the royals. The manufactory had gathered the most skilled craftsmen, the most sophisticated techniques, top materials and sufficient money to produce wares for the palace at any cost. In this background, Jingdezhen, with its favorable natural environment for producing porcelains, leaped dramatically and mounted to the national center of porcelain industry. During the Ming Dynasty, blue and white porcelains remain the main street product of Chinese porcelain. With Zheng He setting out on his voyages to the outside world, it brought the development of foreign trade. Blue and white porcelains were exported in large quantities to many parts of the world, like Asia and Europe. Well, a craze for Chinese porcelains was seen. In the meantime, a breakthrough was made with the emergence of overglazed polychrome porcelains, namely Doucai and Wucai. Both of them were innovated by integrating underglazed blue 
and overglazed colors. Dou Cai was created by applying overglazed colors within outlines painted in underglazed blue. A classical Dou Cai work is the Chicken Cup of Chen Hua Rain of the Ming Dynasty. Wu Sai wares were a progress to Du Sai wares in that underglaze blue was used as an independent color. A classical work of Wu Sai is a lidded jar with fish and weeds pattern of Jiajing reign of the Ming dynasty. The birth of these two porcelain categories marked the beginning of the era of Chinese polychrome porcelains and paved the way for the birth of Gu Sai and Fen Sai. In addition, Zisha teapot emerged and gradually matured during the Ming dynasty, which was another highlight of Chinese ceramics outside Jingdezhen. Zisha teapot is an ideal kind of tea-making vessels and is said to be innovated by monks at the Jinsha Temple of Yixing County of Jiangsu Province, a chief region for making Zisha teapots owing to its abundant reserve of quality red clay mine. The three reigns of Kangxi, Yongzheng, and Qianlong in the Qing Dynasty witnessed a period of stable society and a prosperous economy. Likewise, the Chinese porcelain industry reached its peak during this period, a prime age for porcelains. During the Kangxi reign, the imperial porcelain manufacturer was renamed Imperial King Manufacturer and continued to produce porcelains for the royals. During the Qing dynasty, blue and white porcelain still remained the major products of Jingdezhen. Meanwhile, great progresses were seen for overglaze polychrome wares, which was embodied by the introduction of enamel craft and the innovation of Gusai and Fensai. Gusai is also called Kangxi Wusai. It uses newly invented overglaze blue to replace underglaze blue and is therefore much bolder and brighter than Wusai of the Ming dynasty. Fensai was created by integrating technical advantages from both enamel and gusai. It features a distinct light and shadow effect of painting and could be regarded as the most outstanding porcelain. Accomplishments of the Qing dynasty What's more, there was a big progress for the color glazed porcelains of the Qing dynasty. The color glazes were complicated and classified in details. Red glaze falls into iron red, copper red, and gold red. Blue glaze into sky blue, splashing blue, blue and sacrifice blue, green into watermelon green peacock green, and gumbo green. Among them, high-fired copper red glaze was most difficult to make and the production of lang red, the representative of it, stood for the highest firing techniques in history. Advancements could also be found in other categories like porcelain sculpture and carving, bionic porcelains and so on. From the late Qin Dynasty, to the early Republic of China, the porcelain industry across the country suffered a severe decline for unstable society and economic recession. In 1911, the imperial kiln manufacture that had lasted for more than 600 years was closed and the Chinese porcelain industry stepped into a low ebb. It was not until the foundation of the People's Republic of China that the Chinese porcelain industry regained vitality in a stable society and a booming economy. The Chinese ceramic arts represented by Jing Dezhen fully exemplify the universal laws of art development. Jing Dezhen, in particular, has integrated many excellent handicrafts from other porcelain production regions around the country, created countless superb porcelain, and developed a complete handicraft system of advanced porcelain production. These porcelains and handicrafts 
are the outstanding contributions that China has made to humans' material and spiritual civilization. It is our great responsibility, as well as utmost honor, to inherit, innovate, and glorify these fortunes.